Welcome friends old and new to miscellaneous time. First and foremost, congratulations to the New England Patriots for continuing their Super Bowl winning streak against teams not named the New York Giants. I know it's been an eternity since the Super Bowl. That being said, we're gonna make a video anyway. Instead of talking about that terrible pass call or the fact that that left shark really can't dance at all, we're gonna be talking about the third most popular part of Super Bowl 49, the commercials. What we did was make a list of all the commercials from the Super Bowl and then separate them into six different categories. Cars, movies, food and beer, cell phones, insurance, and anything else. Then from each of those six categories, we picked our most favorite and least favorite commercials. We'll go in depth with each commercial and tell why we did like them or why we didn't. Let's go. We'll start with cars. There is no way from the beginning of this commercial I was ever going to guess that it was going to be for a car. It's kind of obvious what I thought it was going to be for. The commercial comes on and you say, oh god, really? In the Super Bowl? But the way that that blue pill defied physics kept me intrigued long enough to learn what it was really for. And then the punchline with the car getting bigger is such a subtle joke that you don't have to explain anything to your children while at the same time being obvious enough to give us mature audiences a good chuckle and then the tagline bigger more powerful and ready for action just puts it over the top it caught my attention it actually showed off the product and it managed to have a quality joke in there as well this is a prime example of what super bowl commercials are supposed to be now to our least favorite car commercial newfangled idea the BMW i3. Our biggest problem with this one is how disappointing it turned out to be. Just like with the Fiat commercial, it caught my attention at first with something really interesting. Getting the real perspective from 1994 when people didn't know what the internet was, was really cool. Unlike the Fiat commercial, however, this one failed to reel me in after it hooked me. When they jump to the present day, they go way overboard on trying to relate to the older audience's lack of understanding about new technologies. When you say fan vine, fan or a turbine, or a fan vine? Twerking. Can you twerk? Joking about not knowing anything about modern culture isn't funny. Commercials do this over and over, and I'm sick of it. Of course, since we're from this generation, we're gonna find the older generations playing dumb really annoying. But this is our list, so that's our least favorite. Now our favorite movie commercial, Tomorrowland. This trailer showed us two things. A potentially really cool concept, and Brad Bird. And that's all we needed to see. If you don't know who Brad Bird is, he's a pretty spectacular guy who has a pretty flawless filmography record. He's done The Incredibles, The Iron Giant, Ratatouille, and most recently Mission impossible ghost protocol it turns out he's writing directing and producing that means that this is brad bird's baby and i trust this guy to be feeding nurturing making sure that this baby is going to grow up to be something very successful a lawyer or, or doctor or a really good movie or that i wasn't really that hyped for tomorrowland before the trailer and now i am hyped so that one did its job the next movie commercial didn't get us hyped in the slightest terminator genesis who is this movie being made for we had the first two movies which were brilliant masterpieces of film then the third one came out and it was subpar then terminator salvation came out and everybody was sorely disappointed now they want to make a fifth terminator Why? Why? It's obvious that Hollywood is once again taking a classic property and rehashing it for a younger generation to try to get as much money as the original property did. They even went so far as to make the film PG-13. This is pointless. The people who loved the first two movies are not going to watch it by this point. You've already tortured them enough. And their target audience is that generation's children. If I grew up with the Terminator as a kid, and then I had a child, and I saw this trailer come on the Super Bowl, I would mark it on my calendar to take him to a different movie on that day. I might even stay home and pop in the originals and have him watch that instead. I would do whatever it takes to keep this movie from ruining my kid's Terminator experience. You need to show me something new. They said that there was new things, a new threat. That happens to be the exact same Terminator walking through fire scene as in the original. New mission. Maybe this time we'll use a kid. That hasn't been done before right and new fate judging from the trailer that's gonna be probably a robot apocalypse that sounds familiar then old arnold schwarzenegger puts the final straw on the camel's back by delivering his classic tagline i'll be back and letting us all know that this movie isn't going to have an ounce of originality in it all we can hope for now is that this movie will be so bad that they will no longer make any more and further ruin the terminator franchise our favorite commercials for the food slash beer category are tied between 
scene, the Doritos airplane, and Skittles settle it the usual way. They're both really funny commercials, but we couldn't decide between the two types of humor that they bring. You can always count on the Skittles commercials to go really weird. You can always count on the Doritos commercials to be really clever. The sheer hilarity of everyone in the town having a huge right arm is what makes the Skittles one one of the best. You got that baby, and you even got that dog. When that guy that's sitting in the barber chair rips off his apron thing and says, The usual way. Then the Doritos is kind of the opposite of that. Funny because it's absurd humor. The specific correlation between what the other passengers didn't like and that being exactly what that guy did to make them avoid sitting in his seat. So pretty easy picks for us for this one. Tied favorite because of the different kinds of humor that are used. There weren't really that many good beer commercials this year. The least of the least of those commercials was the This Bud's For You ad. Here's how the commercial went. Music, beer, words, Clydesdale's Budweiser logo boom. This might be okay if it was a commercial that was airing in between your daily soaps, but this ad cost them somewhere around 4.5 million dollars. Especially stings that this ad came from Budweiser, a company that has come to be known for its Super Bowl worthy commercials. The commercials are usually the best of the best, this one, not so much. Budweiser might call themselves the king of beer, but this year they definitely weren't king of the commercials. Our favorite cell phone commercial is a pretty good one. Kim Kardashian for T-Mobile. The main reason why I like it is because of the super satirical tone of it. It starts off right away with Kim Kardashian famous person at the bottom. Even Kim Kardashian knows that she makes a living doing absolutely nothing. Or maybe she doesn't, there's always the very real possibility that Kim doesn't know that this commercial is satiring her career. I believe the director actually had Kim Kardashian convinced that this was a truly sad thing that was happening and told her to act sad. We could go into more detail, but the script writing was good, so the commercial was good, and that's about the extent of it. The Sprint Cut Your Bill in Half commercial. This is very, very, very by the numbers. It's just another commercial making a terrible attempt at pulling in its younger viewers. Just like with the BMW commercial, trying to appeal to a younger generation by forcefully putting in things that the younger generation does doesn't work. It's such a cookie cutter commercial that the business meeting probably went something like this. Hey, we need an ad. What does the teen demographic like? It says they like goats? and Bruno Mars. <laughs> Our favorite insurance commercial is the Walter White insurance commercial. The slogan at the end works well enough. Sorta you isn't you, but it was really more of an excuse to just try and get Walter White in a commercial, which is perfectly fine by me. Even though at the end I couldn't really remember what company it was that this commercial was for, we do like our Breaking Bad and incorporating that in a humorous way is great. I pretty much just love how in character Brian Cranston gets for this commercial. Can you win an Oscar for a commercial? I don't think so. <laughs> well, he'll be the first one. Next, Nationwide's Make Safe Happen. Wait! 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 I'll never learn to ride a bike. Or get cooties. I'll never learn to fly. Or travel the world with my best friend. And I won't ever get married. I couldn't grow up because I died from an accident. At Nationwide, we believe in protecting what matters most, your kids. Together, we can make safe happen. Wow, Nationwide. That was dark and depressing. The commercial did a really good job with brand association at least. Yeah, now every time I have a feeling of loneliness, I think of Nationwide. Our favorite commercial in the category of anything else is Revenge for Clash of Clans. Just like with the Walter White commercial, I pretty much love this one just because Liam Neeson is doing his thing in it. It may be starting to sound like we're contradicting ourselves by saying that in a lot of commercials we love it when they use popular things from the media, and in a lot of commercials we hate them for doing the same thing. The difference here is, is that when it's implemented in a clever and natural way, this one and the Eastern's Walter White one weren't trying to force what we love down our own throats. With other commercials who try to do the same thing, they're basically saying, you love this, so why don't you love us? In those cases, it's desperate and annoying, and in the other cases, it's genius. Now granted, this commercial doesn't really show much of the actual product, so there's some flaws in that, but everybody pretty much knows what Clash of Clans is by this point anyway. So for this commercial, they could have either shown the gameplay itself, or they could have shown Nissan playing their game. I think the choice would pretty obviously be live. It's, uh, Liam. 
Our least favorite from anything else, the Kate Upton Game of War commercial. The one that was used for the Super Bowl. Kate Upton is the best thing that could have ever happened to Game of War. But now they seem to be leaning way too heavily on her in their ads. The mobile game right before this, Clash of Clans, showed Game of War what a popular game title should do for their Super Bowl commercials. Something original and funny. Game of War, on the other hand, decided to just keep going with Kate. All this commercial was was an extension of what they've been doing, with more CGI and more Kate Upton bouncing up and down on a horse. I never thought I would say this, but I'm getting sick of Kate Upton. Yes, Game of War, boobs are great, but it's time to take off the training wheels and do something different with your advertisements, especially for the Super Bowl. Well, that's it for our Super Bowl commercial video. Better late than never, right? What was your favorite and least favorite Super Bowl 49 commercial? Tell us your thoughts in the comments. Like and share this video, check out our social media pages, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Cheers.